worship the Lord our God. surrender, Lord. We want to be your son and daughter. We want it to be your children, Lord. Lord, not just that salvation that we are longing for from you, but we are longing for relationship with you. We are longing for that surrendering our lives to you and let you be our Lord of our lives. Lord, let it be. Let it be to your people, Lord, today, Lord. May your Holy Spirit work and move in power in our lives to come to you and surrender that you are the Lord of our lives. Let it be, Lord. Let it be, Holy Spirit. Come work in us, Lord. We want more of you. We want to touch you. We want to touch you tangibly, Lord God. We want to see you. We want to know more of you, Lord. Let your glory fall, Lord God. You're all our needs. You are all our needs in this world, Lord God. You are all our needs in our lives, Lord God. Nothing else in this world whatsoever. And whatever, so Lord Jesus, you're the only one, and nothing can compare to you, Lord Jesus. No one like you, no one like you in your presence, oh Lord Jesus. There is power in your presence, oh Lord God. There is Jesus that is there with us and working and living in us, oh Lord God. And we want you, Jesus, to be increased in our life. We want you, Lord. Desperate from you, Jesus. You're desperate from you, God. You're desperate from 
friendship that you have for us and I want to be your friend Lord forevermore I want to be your friend I want your children to be that desires to be your friend Lord. let it flow Lord. let your glory as upon reading and as upon listening to your word today Lord your message today for us Lord, I pray for your empowerment of your Holy Spirit to be with us, Lord God, to hear your voice today. And if we heard our and if we heard your voice, let us soften our hearts Amen. and embrace the truth and embrace in our lives and apply it, Lord God, constantly, consistently, Lord Jesus, for us to be empowered, for us to be fired up and consume with your fire Lord. upon surrendering to you I pray this in Jesus name Amen and Amen. Amen. Amen Praise the Lord Thank you Wow Very powerful worship Thank you Miki Wow I love those um, sometimes those, those words that rhyme with all these things every day of our lives I think it's rhyme <laughs> No matter what we bring, what the words or message of God to all of us, uh, all the songs that we just, mm -hmm. the words are powerful. Amen. And, and, and to me, it, it, it's just like an intimate, you know, uh, work in, in my life right now that, that the Holy Spirit is here with us. Amen. And it is just gives empowerment and it's driven me for more and, and wanting to have God in our lives. Amen. So let it be, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome to Numa Church, the Holy Spirit Revival Church, as upon uh, listening to, to this wonderful uh, uh, message of God today. And I believe that that is something, you know, the word surrender. It, it leads us, or the word, even the word friends of God. Mm -hmm. I'm a friend of God. It is something that we need to not to neglect or not taking for granted of, but rather to embrace that because that is the love of God. And as I said a while ago, Lord, uh, the, that I was talking to, um, to um, someone that saying, where is that power coming from? I think that's coming from the Lord himself. He's with us, he's in us. The Holy Spirit is in us, it's with us. It, the presence of God make our faith in Jesus stronger and stronger. And I love that presence that we, that, that we are accumulating, that we are receiving, that, that God giving that presence to us. Even if you don't deserve it, even if you are not worthy of his presence, he's there for us. Amen. When we ask him, when we, when we, 
when we desperate for Him, when we are desperate, it, it just, it's just there for you and for me. How, how wonderful it is, how amazing the love of God is. I myself, every day of my life, I cannot comprehend. You know, uh, and, and even today, I just kind of feel the Lord that He's right here with me and, and He's there going to speak to all of us. Amen. Not just me here that saying Amen. this word yes. to all of you, but God is. He's the one who's going to talk to us. He's the one who's going to speak his word Amen. and just listen carefully and, and obey that words that he's saying. And I think that is all we need today to hear. Not yes. all those bad news around us, not all of those things that rioting, looting, whatever, that is going on around us today. You don't mind those things. Whatever the, those people that give you hard time even at your work or every day of your life that you encounter with, it, those won't matter anymore when there is presence of God. And I believe that because every day of my life experiencing those things. And today as we listen to his word, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and invite you to be here with us, O oh Lord Jesus, today. We want to hear more of you. We want to know more of you. Amen. We want to touch Amen. you tangibly, yes. Lord Jesus. Lord, even put your words to my mouth yes. so that you can speak to your people. People may see you, not me. People may hear you, not me, Lord. I want your words to be spoken, Lord God, to your people right now and for them to receive it, Lord, powerfully in the name of Jesus. Cover me under your wings yes, amen. and let it speak, Lord. Allow you that your glory will fall right now in our midst, wherever we are at, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Wow, what a wonderful amen. worship. And yes. prayer that yes. God is here. I believe God is Amen. here. Amen. I believe that he is here. Amen. Actually, I'm, I'm sweating right now. <laughs> Inside of me, it's burning. It, it's like there's thought. I cannot contain. I cannot contain the spirit of God. Wow. Uh, how many of you experiencing this at this Amen. point, at this Amen. very moment? And I want you to experience that. I want you to experience that every day of your life that somehow the love of God is uncontainable. <laughs> and I'm experiencing right now, as it's uncontainable. And as what we see, this is the power of the Spirit. This is the power of God. This is how God can do for you. You know, and, and, and as we continue, the, that knowing God through the Holy Spirit, it is just by using His power, and by using his power, we become more intimate. And by exposing us to his greatness and his glory, when we witness those things, oh, wow, no one can, no one can intervene. No one can touch you. No one can harm you. No Amen. one can yes. take you. No one can separate you from that love of God. Amen. Amen. I, I agree. Amen. You know, last Sunday, Aaron did, did this uh, his wonderful testimony and, and the role of the Spirit in his life. And as we discover, you know, uh, through that testimony, the Holy Spirit give us power over all. And we can use that power. And actually, you have the power. We have the power on our amen, own. Amen, yes. That's you know? And, and, and you know, Jesus Christ himself is set the example of obeying the Father. By just simply obeying the Father, he, he has that power. If he's coming in our flesh, he does the same in us. We are preparing for the day when God will transform us into the Spirit and supply us Amen. his Spirit without measure. So we must be learning and practicing how to use it and it will be led by it in our daily lives today. Amen. I want it. I want it. I want it to be led by the Spirit of God in my yes. life every day. Yes. Because sometimes it's so hard to live in this world. It's too complicated. And, and somehow it, it, it worsens my day if I don't have 
that thoughts, you know, and I had to learn to discipline myself to really keep wanting more of who God is and, and to really knowing and dig in to, to, to his greatness mm -hmm. and to explore more of myself mm -hmm. in his word daily. Mm -hmm. In Romans 8 verse 14, it said, for as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the son of God. They are the children Amen. of God. So how many of us today are led by the Spirit? How many Amen. of us today that we allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead us? Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and how we can say, how can we, you know, if we are, you know, like this is what we said, we are the children of God when we are led by the Spirit of God through His Spirit. Now, do you allow yourself to be led by the Spirit of God? How sensitive are we to influence and suggestion of the Spirit of God? Is the, is the Spirit of the Lord, you know, are you minding the Spirit of God when, when God speaks to you, when the Spirit of God leads you or guides you? How well we are led by the Spirit of God. And you know, using the power of the Holy Spirit, you must lead by the Spirit. You must lead by the Spirit. You can't not just use the power of the Holy Spirit without leading it, without the Holy Spirit leading it. I'm telling you that because I experienced this. But there are three ways how to consider how to use the power of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit leads. Number one, this is number one. Spend more time with God. Amen. Don't just ask the Holy Spirit to work in you. Don't ask just the Holy Spirit to, to move in power if you're not spending time with the Lord. You cannot discover those, those greatness. You cannot, you cannot experience the glory if you're not spending time with him, you can just use it. In the name of Jesus, you walk, and then you never spend time with him. Right? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Maximize your most important hour of its day. I don't know. I don't know about you how much time that you spend with the Lord. I don't know your focus in life. Mm -hmm. Next it's number two, focus on the eternal, not on temporal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about that next week, actually, but I'm going to give you the three ways to consider mm -hmm. in order for us to use the power of the Holy Spirit as led by the Spirit of the Lord. Be honest about how much you mind the things of the flesh. How much you mind the things of uh, the things of the flesh and how much you mind the Spirit of God is in you. Be honest about that. Number three, listen to the voice of God. Learn to hear the still and learn to hear the small voice of the Lord. That is the conviction that God has given us. And with the spirit of the Lord, he give us that conviction. And there is power in it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But I want to focus today the number one to consider to use the power of the Holy Spirit as led by the Spirit of the Lord. Number one is to spend more time with God. I don't know about you, how important it is for you to have time with the Lord. How much time you spend with Him? I don't know. And I cannot judge anyone else if they, will, if they are really spending time with God or not. But this is what I tell you. It is essential for us as a Christian to spend time with him more and more. Even today, as we know, we heard this, is, this will be the last day. This will be the end times. This will be something that, that we know that we have to consider more of God. It's not that something that you alert with or something that warns you, that makes you go and, and do the right thing and spend time more of God. But you know what? 
For me, it is a pleasure. It is a pleasure to worship God. It is a pleasure to talk to Him. I don't know about you. I want every second of my life, I wish I could talk to Him and I can hear His voice from time to time. And we are able, we have that ability to talk to Him. The most important hour of this day is the hour you spend in prayer. Is speaking and talking to God. You know why? Because it's the, only, it's the only source of your spiritual power and effectiveness. How can you be powerful and effective in this world? By just simply talking to Him. By just simply spending time with Him. That's how can you be powerful and very effective to influence the world and to people that are around you. I don't know who you were around with, but this is my thing. As much as possible. When I speak to God, it always see, and I always see the grace and the love. I always feel that way. And it humbles me. And it humbles me. It says in Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 18, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching there unto with all the perseverance and supplications for all saints. Now, if, if you look at that word of Paul right there in Ephesians 6, 10, verse 10, how can we how can we experience, how can we have that power of this might? And, and to become strong in the Lord by simply having the Spirit of God, by simply asking God and pray and talk to Him. That's how can you be empowered. That's how you become, um, be strong in, in the Lord, in your faith in God. However, for some reason, <clears throat> some of us have these thoughts of laziness and a lot of excuses. Mm -hmm. Some people said, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell God. How many of you have that? Right? You know, if, if I will talk today or this afternoon, maybe I have a moment with the Lord or I have time to spend time with how can I say, or what I'm going to tell, oh, I'm going to talk about God. Well, there's a lot of things that you need to talk to God, and it's not an excuse. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes we do this, some of us, we do this, saying, I have no time. I have rather to do things to make it work. Like depending, depending and trusting God, mm -hmm. or depending and trusting yourself, your own knowledge and your own wisdom. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make this work, so I don't care about my spirit. I do care about my, my might, my power. <sighs> wow, those are the things, that excuses. Or even say, I'm not that kind of person that you think. I am not religious, so don't tell me about talking to God. And some people, they're making a joke. If you keep asking God, if you keep praying to God, you might surpass the, the heaven. And some of us, we tend to be, when we get down on our knees, some of us, we experience, we get drowsy, and we don't want to continue. Some tend to repeat themselves, keep praying and praying and keep repeating themselves. And others just go through their motion and emotion. And you know what I call this? This I call spiritual timidity. Let me talk to you about that spiritual timidity a little bit. Spiritual timidity, this one it, that holds us not to communicate with the Lord. Mm -hmm. These are the things. These are the excuses. These are the things that in our mind and in our thoughts that holding us back not to communicate or not to talk to God. 
And in the Bible says in first, uh, in uh, second, Tim where's that? Second Timothy, verse seven. For God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power of love and a sound mind. You know what is spirit of timidity? This is the fear in us, the fear of the unknown or unfamiliar or fear of making decision and changes. How many of you wanting to have make changes? Sometimes we don't ch like changes because it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. We don't like unknown things because you know, you, <laughs> we, we always hesitant to do things that for us is new and we don't want changes. And that is spiritual timidity. And, and, and Paul told, tell, told Timothy, you know, God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of power and love and a sound of mind. That means you're peacefully, joyfully, God given all of this so that you will be empowered and so that you can use that power, the power of love, the power of joy, the power of peace, the power of hope, of glory. Mm -hmm. How can we overcome this spiritual timidity and to become strong in God and in the power of his might, as what in Ephesians 6.10 says? You know what? It's simple. Only by tapping the source of that power, foremost, mm -hmm. first of all, in prayer and talking to him. In particular, praying in the spirit. Talking to God, speak to him. However, I'll tell you, many of us, is, is that relevance? Is that how valuable it is to talk to God? How relevant it is today in our time to, to speak to God and pray to God? How important it is today, right? But you know, when you communicate with God, there is power in it. Amen. I experienced Amen. that. Amen. Sometimes when, when, I, when I'm in distress, when I am in, I know I have these things in my mind that bothers me. You know, the only thing that I could do, because nothing that I could do with my situation and the things that bothers me, the only thing that I could do for me to have peace is to go back to God and talk to Him. Amen. That's right. And that is power. Mm -hmm. It's just all of a sudden, everything changed. The pride in my heart will be humbled mm -hmm. by just simply talking to God. Mm -hmm. How many of you experienced that? That is the power. The, the thing there, why there is no power in communication with God? Why, why you are not experiencing it? But just simply having that power of communication with God is to have that confidence that you are a child of God, Amen. that you are a friend of God. How many of you said that I am a friend of God? Yeah. I am a child of God. And that is my confidence to talk to him. Amen. And there are, and there, and, and you know, when we talk to him, we need to ask him to inspire it. Ask him to stir up the spirit within you. Ask him to give your urgency and fervor and concentration. Ask him to make you bold and powerful in your prayer. And that is the confidence that I'm talking about. If you have the confidence, if you have this relationship with God and you know that you are submitting and obeying the Lord, you have that confidence all the time to say whatever you want. How many of you have relationship with your father? If you are a friend of your father, I don't have a father, but I have my mom growing up. When I want something from my mom, I need to be friend with him and be obedient to him and submit myself to her. Mm -hmm. To her is like whatever she wanted to, for me to do, I will do it because I want something from her. Mm -hmm. And how many of you do that, right? But you know what? Regardless... If you don't need or, or you don't need anything from God, exactly. regardless, you have to ask God. You have to steer up from God. 
you need to communicate with God. And many of us, and to tell you, you know why we do this? Because we can't do nothing of ourselves. That's what Jesus said, apart from me, we can't do nothing. Yes. To have effective prayers and communication with the Lord, God must be working in our minds by His Spirit. Mm -hmm. Not working. <laughs> Sometimes we manipulate the things. Even our prayers, we manipulate it. What we wanted, it, what we wanted in our mind is what we uttered, but not what God's telling you to ask for. Mm -hmm. yeah. These wonderful qualities of godly character that the Holy Spirit will bring into your life. So we need the Spirit. We need that Spirit to stir you up. Number one, ask Him to stir up the Spirit within you. You have to ask God for the Spirit. Many things that when we start praying, when we start talking to God, you know what you are talking to? Uh, no, you know what your petition or your request to? Is that what you need materially? You're not asking for, for something that can change you, that can transform you, that can see the glory of God in your life. You're asking for what you need, you know? In Luke 11, 13, he said, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Have you ever asked the Holy Spirit? God will give it yes. to you. He is there with you, by the way. Mm -hmm. But how often do you ask God? Maybe not too many times. Or maybe, <laughs> not, I mean, maybe not just quite a few times that you ask God for something. When you are desperate, then you ask God. But when you're not, when you don't need anything for yourself, when you're content, when you're satisfied, you know, you, you, you forgot. And you neglect to, to really... Talk to God and commune with Him. But many people even, they didn't even ask God. That's why James, in James chapter 4, verse 2, is uh, reminding us, you know, you have nothing because you haven't asked. Have you ever asked God? Right? Mm -hmm. You need to steer the Spirit within you. Stir up the spirit within you. Ask him, Lord, stir up, me, stir up the spirit that is within me, Lord. Number two, ask God to inspire that, 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 you're, that you communicate with him. Ask God to inspire those communications. Ask God to inspire those, that your, your, your talk to God. Your one-on-one -on -one with God. Jesus Christ is the model in our prayer. And he said this, Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. What does that mean? In addition to our physical needs, we have a daily spiritual needs. We're not just asking for daily bread. Not just asking for physical needs, but we're asking for spiritual needs. Emotional needs. Mentally needs. Every aspect of our lives that we have needs, and we are asking for that. Jesus Christ himself, he says this, man cannot live by bread alone. We're not asking for, sometimes we're not asking for the word of God to work in our lives. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16, it says this, that is why we never give up. True, though our bodies are dying, our spirit are being renewed every day. Our spirit needs renewed well, every day. We need to be refreshed. Mm -hmm. This world is too tiring to live with. I, I have come to this world with sin, <laughs> I believe. Mm -hmm. But when I received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior, as my Savior, as salvation, and Lord of my life, then it turns to something that dying 
physical is no longer exists in my life. It's no longer my concern. This body is no longer my concern. Mm -hmm. When I have Jesus, my spirit is my concern that I need to be renewed every day of my life from glory to glory. Amen. Number three, ask him to give you urgency and fervor and concentration. As what you said, as what we heard, read James chapter 5, and then in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, on our prayer list, there's nine qualities of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. From time to time, perhaps a couple of times a week, go down the list, these qualities that the Spirit should be producing in your life. Put the list before God and ask for the specific. When you are weak in area, point, point it. Ask God for more of His love. Tell God why you need it. Ask for more joy. And tell God where and why you need it for. Ask for more peace, long-suffering, more gentleness. Why do you need them? Where you need it in your life. Tell God where you need more temperance or self-control. And that is the fruit of the Spirit. Do you ever beat yourself up because your lack of self-control? Do you truly realize that you can do nothing of yourself? I did. <laughs> I've experienced so many times that I know I'm not capable of anything to do things without Jesus. Even talking here to, today, I am not capable of. I don't even know what I'm saying right now. English is not even my second language. Right? Yeah. I, have, I think English is my fifth language. In my own country, I have three languages that I speak. But you know what? I can just say whatever, but God that puts in my heart. And with wisdom, with right discernment, and with the knowledge that come from God. And that is the power. That's where I can use the power of God because I'm... I, I'm, I'm longing for intimacy with him. And I can ask him to make me bold and powerful in my communication, in my mm -hmm. prayer, in my way of talking to him. Second Timothy 1 verse 7, which say the Holy Spirit is not the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. And of sound mind. In Isaiah 11, verse 2 to 5, which call it the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. Amen. When you have the fear of God, it's reverence. It, it, it's something that you respect the presence of God. You are ease there all the time with us. And I think for me, based on the things that I just said, these are the qualities we should be growing in and exhibiting more and more as we are led by the Spirit. Our prayer life is the single most important key to our spiritual life. How much spiritual power we have, how much faith, faith we have, how spirit-minded we are. To be led by the Spirit, we must stop the source of spiritual power power by praying in the spirit every day and I'm telling you and I'm telling you we are only effective as Christians in so far as we develop a truly strong relationship with our father daily a solid communication with him and the kind of prayer that will get results is prayer that is inspired and fueled by the spirit here is where being led by the spirit starts. So when we come up short in area or fail to grow spiritually, we must remember to go back to the source of the spiritual power, to grow. We achieve nothing but human right. 
human might or power, but only God's spirit. How many of you trying? I try hard so many times in my life, in my own knowledge, in my own wisdom, in my own strength, I can do all things. <laughs> Man, I failed so many times doing those things. We need to recognize and acknowledge the power of God that is in us. Amen. It's not by might nor by power, Amen. but by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can do nothing without Him. Amen. You know, as you know, there are gifts of the Spirit and they are available to all believers. We can always use this gift. However, let us not desire, only desire these spiritual gifts, mm -hmm. but also not to be afraid and to try and stir these gifts up with the Lord. Use them. Mm -hmm. Use them boldly, courageously. Not too many people, not too many Christians longing for that. I mean, I wanted to see those Christians out there that using the gift of the Holy Spirit, the gift of faith, the gift of wisdom, the gift of knowledge, the gift of discernment, the gift of prophecy, the gift of speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues, the gift of healing. How I many of you yeah. using those, right? Maybe you don't have time to use those because you have no time with God at all. Maybe you don't know how to use them because you have no power to use them. You have no confidence because you yourself don't have time and spend time with God. And I encourage everyone else that we need more spend time with the Lord. In, in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 39, that solidified the gift of the Holy Spirit that is in us. The Spirit of God is in us and can work in us. It says, therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy. That is the encouragement of Paul. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, Paul says this again to the Corinthians. Desire a spiritual gift, but especially that you may prophesy. Wow. Wow. In, in 1 Thessalonians 5.19, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the prophecy. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. And that is in 1 Timothy 4 verse 14. And in, verse, in 2 Timothy verse 1, 6, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is on you through the laying of my hands. God has anointed us. Amen. I believe that. He anointed us. He anoints me. He anoints me to preach the good Amen. news. He anoints me to, to, to heal the brokenhearted. He anoints me to share the, the, the love of God to many as much as I could. As much as I could reach out many people in the world, I would. Every believer should go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to release these gifts through them anytime that he will want to do so. God wants to do those things. He wants to release his gift, but we never ask of him. We don't ask. God knows that you will be a willing vessel for the manifestation of this gift and that you will give him a full and solid green light to manifest this gift through you at any time that he will want to do so. Amen. Right? How much willingness or how, how much your determination to have those gifts towards in you? You have the power. You have the power to change this world. You have the power to change those people that out there that keep rioting and keep looting and keep destroying the city and keep destroying the lives of other people. You have the power to... to to do and to change that and transform that by just simply asking God and spend time with Him. Amen. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is healing. Amen. 
how many of you have that power of healing? But all you got to do is to confront God, to talk to God and say, Lord, give me the power to heal. Lord, give me that power to heal that person that needs to be healed. But here's the thing. Many of people, they are desiring for, for, for or some people, they desire to heal other people, but then themselves, they're not healed. Them themselves, they are ill and sick. You need to be healed first before you go to heal others. You need to be changed and transformed first before you need to, to see changes and transformation there. Amen. I myself, I've been asking God every day of my life, God change me, humble me, Lord. Everything that is not essential or necessary in my life, take it all out. Remove them, God. I don't need them, Lord, because I want to see changes. I want to see transformation. First of all, to your people, I want to see them yield. I want to see them be humble their lives to you and take the pride in their lives. Amen. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is that. Healing. Amen. We need to desire that. But first, desire that God will heal us. Ask Him to heal yes, Lord. you. You know, as much as possible, we should take advantage of this opportunity at this point of ours. In our time today, we should take yeah. advantage yeah. of this moment. That ask God for your for his healing touch. Mm -hmm. Ask God to heal you. Mm -hmm. Everything that is not, that needs to be healed, is spiritually, mentally, emotionally, God will heal that. Even your, mm -hmm. your physical, God will heal it. And the moment you repent, the moment you ask God and humble yourself to him Amen. and turn away from your sin, you know, one thing that he said this, I will heal you. Amen. And then you will be able to heal. And then, because by experiencing it, now you let other experience healing. Amen. And that is the love of God. You know, the truth about this healing, the truth plain about this, is this. Sometimes we seem to lack that power today. Don't we? No. Mm -hmm. We still have the power. We still have the power, the same the power that Christ had. Actually, Jesus mentioned that. Mm -hmm. yeah. In his own word, in his own lips, in his own mouth, he said this. You will see greater things, but you can do greater things than this. You will see greater things than this. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, he will empower you, and he will... And you, will go, and you will do greater. And you will do greater things. I, I believe today God is telling me for all of you Christians out there, you have the power, the same power as Christ had. Amen. The same as the the same as the apostles, the prophets, the disciples of Jesus Christ. The same power that they have, you have it. You know why? Because you have the Holy Spirit. But the problem is this. I believe, I believe it's not because of God denies that power to us. But I believe we are so close to a modern materialistic world. Our minds are so filled with material interests of this life. Our minds and our hearts are so far from God. We are so out of touch with Him. Through lack of enough time you spend in the study of His Word and lack of enough time, the right kind of surrender, submissive, earnest, and heart trending prayer and consequently because 
One thing for sure. When we are attached of this world, I guarantee you, you are not filled with the Spirit of the Lord. You want to gain that power? You need to be filled with the Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit which afford us the power of God. And by just simply communicating with God every time. You know, the people of God, as I said, the prophets, the apostles, the disciples of, the disciples of Christ, they have the same power as Christ had because they have the Holy Spirit. Because they live and walk close to God and were filled with the Holy Spirit. How many of you desire that? How many of you desire that today that you are wanting to be close with the Lord? That you are wanting to draw near to God, to get closer more and more, to be the Lord of your life. Many of us, and I believe all of this, all of people in the world, they need salvation. Amen. I believe that. Amen. They need and want salvation. Even non-Christians, even non-religious people, even people that are, uh, don't have any idea about God, they want salvation. I need salvation. That's why I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. But to tell you the truth, that's all matter to many. It's the salvation. But for us as a Christian, what matter should be is that Jesus Christ is the Lord of our life. Amen. You know how good that is? And you obey and trust Him? His love for you will never fail. When you are a friend of God, when you are a child of God, he is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He never changed. He never failed us. And I encourage you today. Just be thankful to God. I am thankful because I have salvation. Because of Jesus, I receive and embrace that salvation. But I am more grateful because Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. Because when I know that Jesus is the Lord of my life, and I know that I submit and trust and obey Him, He will never fail me. And He is faithful to complete the work begun in me. And in the same way, I am thankful that there is the Spirit of God that works in me, that leads me to Him, that me going closer to Him. And God, when God, when you get closer to God, when you draw near to God, He will get closer to you and draw near to you. And you will see His glory. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Today, I just said, Lord, if we never surrender completely our lives to you and be the Lord of our lives, Lord Jesus. Lord, we wanted to surrender it to you right now. I said, God, be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life, oh Lord Jesus, forever. I, I, I cannot handle this world situation, the things that are around me, Lord, I cannot handle it anymore. And I'm sick and tired of being Lord of my life, of others being Lord of my life. I want you to be the Lord of my life, oh God. And just by simply saying that, Lord, I surrender to you. 
And I gave all my life to you, Lord Jesus, no matter what. And so that I can see your glory, that I can see your greatness. Let the Holy Spirit lead me, Lord Jesus. I want more of your spirit, Lord God, to work in my life. I want the spirit, Lord, that Jesus, Lord, to really use me, Lord God. I'm willing vessels, Lord Jesus. I'm willing, Lord God, to take, Lord Jesus, the risk of just of just having you in my life and, and be bold and be courageous. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, let it be to your people. You are all our needs today, Lord. You are all our needs. I pray, Lord God, for all of us to desire for more of you. Just spending time with you more. Just spending time, uh, our lives to you more and more. Whatever we do, whatever we said, oh Lord God. Whatever the time that we have, oh Lord Jesus, we got to spend time with you. No matter what, we still need to think about you more and more, Lord Jesus, so that the power of God may work in us. Let it be, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray right now for your people. May the good Lord and gracious God and merciful God be with you all and receive those love that he has for you. And you know, there's a great promise that God has spoken today. And the great promise is this, the things that you haven't heard, the things that you haven't seen, or your mind even, even your mind cannot conceive or your heart cannot conceive, God prepared those things for those whom He loved and He loves you. And just remember all the time, it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and be gracious to you that you may walk in the Spirit of God, that you may desire more of Him, that you may spend more time with the Lord, more than what you think, more than what is in your mind, more than what is in your heart. When you give, give it all to God. Give all you are, who you are in God. Give all to God, who you are and what you are, and whatever you have. Give it all to the Lord. Because He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be honored. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. so much and you need to love him more and more and so you will see his great thank you for joining the numa the holy spirit revival church have a great day god bless you all Amen. Amen.